Good morning. Today we are reviewing Chapter 8, which is Rational Expressions. On Chapter 8, we learn how to add fractions, where we have a polynomial on the denominators. We also multiplied and divided rational expressions, as well as solving rational expressions, just like 1 and 2. Now let's go and review first the different processes for each one. Now remember that whenever we are multiplying, we just want to be able to factor the numerator and the denominator, factor the numerator and the denominator, and see what cancels. On a division, we first we want to be able to take the reciprocal of the second fraction to change it to multiplication, and then it will be exactly the same process. So on multiplication and division, we just want to be able to factor everything and then see what cancels. Whenever we are dealing with a addition, just like we learned before, in order to be able to add two fractions, we need to be able to have the same denominator. So whenever it's an addition or a subtraction, we want to be able to factor the denominator and we want to be able to make them the same, common denominators. Now, whenever we have an equation, our whole purpose first is to be able to cancel the denominators. So let's go and start with number one. On number one, we have an equation. Now remember that sometimes you are able to cross multiply. If we just have x plus 2 over 3 is equal to negative 8 over 3x plus 15, then we will be able to cross multiply. But because we have two fractions on the left hand side that are adding, we will want to be able to cancel the denominator. That will be the easiest way to be able to solve this equation. So first, before you do anything else, you want to be able to factor the denominators that you are able to factor. x plus 5 cannot be factored, 3 cannot be factored, but we can factor 3x plus 15. So let me go and rewrite it underneath. Some of you guys don't rewrite it, which is fine, but I'm going to go and rewrite it so I can have more space. I have negative 4 over x plus 5 plus, it stays the same, equal to negative 8. And I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to go and factor. So what can I factor out of the 3x and the 15? Is there a number that divides 3 and 15? Yes. Do they both have an x? No. So I can only take out a 3. Inside, I'm going to have an x plus 5. Now remember, whenever we have an equation, our whole purpose is to cancel the denominator. So I'm going to go and multiply each one by 3, x plus 5. 3, x plus 5, and 3, x plus 5. So on the first one, the x plus 5 cancels. So we end up with 3 multiplied by negative 4 plus. On the next one, the 3's cancel. So we just end up with x plus 5 multiplied by x plus 2. And on the last one, the 3's cancel, and also the x plus 5 cancel. So they both cancel. Now, if you guys notice, all of the denominators cancel. If you are left with the denominator, you know that you did something wrong. You need to be able to go back and say, okay, what else do I need to multiply so I can cancel the denominators? Now from here we just have an equation we want to be able to simplify. So it gives me 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. I'm not going to use my destroyed property to multiply this out. Distribute the x, distribute the 5. x times x will give me x squared, x times 2 will give me plus 2x. 5 times x will give me plus 5x. 5 times 2 will give me positive 10. Now I want to combine like terms. I'm going to combine those two numbers, and I'm going to combine those two. So I end up with x squared, 
2x plus 5x will give me 7x. Negative 12 plus 10 will give me negative 2. Now, I still have a quadratic equation. I want to be able to make it equal to 0 to see if I can factor it. So let's go and move that 8 to the left. It becomes a positive 8. x squared plus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, if by any chance I'm not able to factor it, then I'm going to have to be forced to use a quadratic formula. I cannot complete the square because this is odd. But lucky for us, we can factor it. So x and x factors of 6 will be positive 6 and positive 1. It gives me that's correct. Now I'm a, I can use my zero product property. It will be x plus 6 equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0. And I just solve it. So move the 6 to the right becomes a negative 6. Move the 1 to the right becomes a negative 1. Now remember that we do have restrictions. We want to be able to find the restrictions. If I plug in a negative 6 in here, the denominator cannot be 0. So it gives me negative 6 plus 5. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. That's not equal to 0. So that's fine. If we plug it in here, because it's a factor form, you don't need to. But let's go and try it out anyways. So it gives me negative 18 plus 5 is negative 3. is not equal to 0. So this one works fine. Let's try the negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5 will be 4. So 4 is not equal to 0. Perfect. In here will be negative 3 plus 15 is 12 is not equal to 0. Now, remember that you actually did not need to plug it into this one because when you factor out, it's just x plus 5. And that's when you are checking in here. But both of them are your answers, x minus 6 and x minus 1. Let's continue with problem number 2. On problem number two, I still have an equation. I want to be able to factor the denominator, same thing with, that we did with number one. So I'm going to go and factor the x squared as x multiplied by x. Now remember that whenever you have an equation, your whole purpose is to cancel the denominator. So I multiply each one by x times x, x times x, x times x. On the first one, nothing cancels, so we just have x times x times 9 will give me 9x squared. On the next one, both x's cancel, so we just end up with plus 6. On the last one, we have an x, 1x cancel, so we have 21 times x is 21x. I have a quadratic equation, so I want to be able to make it equal to 0. So then I can see if I can factor it. If I can factor it, I can see if I can complete the square or use the quadratic formula. Let's go and move my 21 to the left so I can make it equal to 0. That will give me 9x squared minus 21x plus 6 equal to 0. You first want to be able to take out the common factor. So one number divides 9, 21, and 6. 3. Do they both have an, all of them have an x? No. So it'll be 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. Now I'm going to see if I can factor this out. If not, I can use my quadratic formula. 3x and x, they both have to be negative. So it gives me 2, that gives me 6, and one more is 7. Then from here, I use my zero product property. Remember, you don't need to place the 3 equal to 0. Because if you place the 3 equal to 0, that's false. So that doesn't help. You have 3x minus 1 equal to 0. Move the 1 to the right becomes a positive. Divide by 3. So x is equal to 1 over 3. x minus 2 equal to 0. Move the 2 to the right becomes a positive. 
Now, which are the only restrictions that we have? So if you guys notice, the only restriction that we have is that the denominator cannot be zero. This is not zero, and this is not zero. Because whenever we only have the x on the denominator. So both answers are correct. On problem number three, we have a multiplication. Whenever we have a multiplication, we just want to be able to factor the numerator and the denominator the numerator and the denominator, and see what cancels. Is the number that divides 1, 6, and 27? No. Do they all have an x? No. Nothing to take out. Factors of x squared are x and x. Factors of 27 will be 9 and 3, positive and negative. Negative 3 plus 9 is positive 6. On the denominator, double parenthesis. Factors of 5x squared are 5x and x. Factors of 9 are 3 and 3, 9 and 1. This is a positive, so they both have to be have the same sign. In this case, they're both negative. And 3 and 3. That gives you 15 minus 3 is negative 18. Remember that whenever your first number is negative, you want to take out a negative number. Let's go and take out the common factor. Is there a number that divides 15 and 9? Yes. 3? Does it got a negative number? Do they both have an x? Yes. Inside, 3x times 5x will give us negative 15x squared. And negative 3x minus 3 will give you positive 9x. On the denominator, we have 5x minus 2. So the 5x minus 3 cancels, the x minus 3 cancels, and that's about it. So as a result, we have a negative 3x over x plus 9. Let's continue with problem number 4. On problem number four, we have an addition. Now remember that the whole purpose of an addition, or the, what we want to make, is the denominator is the same. You want to factor the denominators first. Many of you guys are multiplying this side by x squared minus 81, and this side by x plus 9. You are making too much work. You want to be able to factor the denominators. So x squared minus 81, you should be able to recognize that that difference of two squares, that'll be 3x over, double parenthesis, factors of x squared are x and x, negative 9 and positive 9, plus 8 over x plus 9. We want to be able to make the denominators the same. So on the right hand side, I need an x minus 9, and we're going to do it on the numerator and the denominator as well. Use my distributive property to simplify. So 3x over x minus 9, x plus 9, plus 8x minus 72 over x minus 9, x plus 9. Now that we have the same denominator, I can combine like terms and add the fractions. That'll give me 11x minus 72 over x minus 9, x plus 9. 